Welcome. In this session, I would like to explain to you how to connect and query Microsoft SQL Server using Windows PowerShell. The SQL stands for Structured Query Language. Before I start, I need to make sure that you have the following. You need a running instance of Microsoft SQL Server with credentials that allow you to access the server. If you don't have this, you will need to consult with your database administrator to either get the proper authorization for your account or to create a new SQL login with the proper author authorization. Um, you will need a full understanding of how to use variables and loops, um, how to use the pipeline and how to, use, uh, how to handle error messages in Windows PowerShell. If you are unsure or you would like to refresh your memory, please view one of my earlier sessions. To be able to connect to Microsoft SQL Server, we either need to have the SQL Server management tools with the PowerShell components installed on the machine we are running on, but we can also import the module using a PS session. To be able to import the module, the enable PS remoting command needs to be run once only on the server that we would like to access to, um, to enable it to receive the commands. Um, to open a session to the remote, remote PC that, is, that has the SQL PS module installed, we need to create a new session by using the new PS session command. We then use the invoke command to run uh, a command on the remote host. And then we use the import module to import the SQL PS module into the session that we've just opened. To connect to the Microsoft SQL Server, we will use the invoke SQL CMD commandlet that is part of the SQL PS module. To be able to do this, we need to specify the following. We need to specify the server name that we would like to connect to. If the server has multiple instances or is running on a SQL Server Express version, then we need to specify the instance that we would like to connect to. We need to specify the database name that we would like to open. If your user account that you are logged in with does not have access rights to the server, you will need to specify a username and a password for a user that is stored locally in the SQL server, who is allowed read access on the database and is specified to, uh, to log in to the server. If you would like to write to the database, you obviously need write access to the database. Next up, we would specify the TSQL query that we will use to extract the data from the SQL Server. TSQL stands for Transact SQL, obviously Structured Query Language. Or we need to specify the input file where we have a valid TSQL written file that will access the SQL Server. Okay, the best way to query SQL Server with PowerShell is to store the data in an object variable, or we could call it a database or data set variable. Therefore, we would call the, or create an object that will store the result of the invoke SQL CMD. We specify the TSQL query in a string variable. Then we specify the server name or instance name with a string variable. We specify the database with a string variable and the username and password of the user stored in the SQL server uh, in instance. Um, we can use either the for each object command on the pipeline to go through each row in the data set um, or data set object or we can use the for each statement um, to extract the data from each row in the dataset object. Okay, let's wrap this up with a couple of examples in PowerShell ISE. Okay, I've opened Windows PowerShell ISE on a system that does not have the SQ, P, uh, SQL PS uh, module installed. I can show it to you if I search for modules and specify SQL. You can see that the SQL 
PS uh, module is not included. So the first thing to get this to work is that you need to enable PS remoting on the server that you are, would like to access. We're just specifying the force that it does not give us any error messages when executing the command. Next up, we need to um, specify um, variables. So we're going to specify a variable for the server or the instance that we would like to connect to, the database, the username, and the password that we're going to use to connect to that. Okay, first up, we're going to create a PS session by specifying the new PS session commandlet. And we also specify the computer name that we would like to access. So if I create that, let's create a new PS session. Just to show you that the data type of this is a PS session, I'm going to run the get type and it returns that it is a PS session. Next up, I'm just going to run a command to uh, push the variables um, to our session. Um, after this, we would like to use the invoke command to connect to the session. So we are using invoke command, connect to the session. In the script, we can call other commandlets. So we are going to call the commandlet called import module. Then we are importing the SQL PS module into the session. And as an error action, I'm specifying continue, which is the default. So this would not make sense, but you could specify stop in your script just to make, um, if, the, if this is not uh, imported properly, that your execution will stop. Right, so I'm going to run the invoke command, if I execute that. It actually imports the module into the session. Don't worry about the error messages, it's just a couple of verbs that are not available. So next up, we are calling the invoke command again. We are connecting to the session and in the script we are creating a data set object by calling the invoke cmd command Oops. and specifying a query. We're just going to select star from the table staff, I'm specifying a server name, specifying a database, a username and a password. So if I execute this, it will take a bit of time. It doesn't return anything since we are storing it in an object. So if I execute this last command, which says invoke command, the session, and then I'm just counting how many items are in our data set object. So if I run that, it'll return that there are 680 objects in that data set. And just to show you that the invoke SQL command is not part of our system. So this is a way to remotely access uh, or that you don't have to install anything on your machine that you are running this from. There are lots of free, it could be that you have a system that just doesn't have the capabilities or it's just you don't just don't want to install it. After you are finished, you should always clean up your PS session. There are two ways of doing that. You can either pipe the command. So we are saying, calling the session and then we're going to remove, them, remove the session or we just say remove PS session, which I'll run and that'll just safely remove our session. Okay, I've opened a different computer that actually has the module PS SQL installed. So if I search for SQL, you will notice that the module is installed. And if you search for the name, you can just look up that the invoke SQL CMD is part of that module. All right, the first thing I'd like to demonstrate is the invoke command. Um, and we're going to save it to a data set again. This time I'm using a query to do that as well. So just the query would just be stored in a variable. So if I execute my invoke SQL command with the query, the server name, the database, the username, and the password, it will connect to my SQL database. Um, just to show you that the data set, what kind of object or data type it is, 
um, you can notice that it is an object and that the base type is a system array. So what we're doing is we're actually storing an, ar an array collection as a system object. So just to show you that we actually have quite a lot of data in there, I'm just running the data set dot count and you can see that we have 3,504 items stored in our data set object. Next up, I'm doing the exact same thing, but this time I'm gonna use a file location where I've stored a TSQL command. So if I execute this, um, well, I need to specify the invoke SQL with the input file. So I'm gonna execute this and I'm gonna run the count just to show you that we have a different result. Now, if we would like to do something with the data that we have in this data set, we should use the for each command. Um, the for each command is specified by specifying the for each. Then we need to specify an item variable and then we specify the array collection. So what we do is for each item in the array collection, we want to do something. So if I execute this, you will notice that for every item it will run this command. Now, the command that I'm running is that we specify the dot. This will give us the column names that we've stored. Um, since I'm not, uh, in my uh, query, I'm just querying the, ident the user identity. This is the column name of the data set that we, have, we currently have stored. Another way to do that is to use the pipeline. And for that, we use the for each object. Um, command. So we specify our data set, we're going to pipe that to the for each object and we're going to execute using the um, pipe variable and then again calling our user ident column. So if I execute that, it will execute and just give us the exact same information as we had before. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the session and I'm looking forward to our next one.